What's up everybody? Welcome back to 23rd Garage. Today I want to give you guys a little tip on why you should not buy a car sight unseen. Right here, we bought this, what is this, a 2015 I think? I know it's a 16. A 16, 16. The thing about this car is uh, it, 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 it was like a really good deal and Vlad wanted it so he jumped on it and he didn't even like notice any of this damage. So once the car came in, obviously we started looking at it and seeing all that. Uh, in all fairness though, Ben looked at the car on the auction pictures and he said basically exactly what is going on here. So that's the difference between an experienced framer and just somebody who actually may have done a few frame jobs here and there. I'm not saying Vlad doesn't know what he's talking about or doesn't know what he's doing, but Ben is a, I would say a professional framer. And so when he looked at the car, he said, hey man, that thing is creamed. And he was right. He was absolutely right. This thing is absolutely destroyed. Uh, it, we've, we've, we've done cars like this before, but uh, I guess this is going to be the first car that you all see us do. So, uh, you know, I think, I don't know, might be able to pull all this out and possibly replace just the frame rail, or maybe we'll just replace everything. I'd rather just replace everything, but uh, just wanted to show it to you guys and wanted you guys to know that when you're going to bid on a car on the auction, always have somebody go down there and look at it in person. Don't just blindly bid on it. I know a lot of people will find a really good deal, say like in Florida or Alabama or Tennessee, and they live like in New York or Washington, and they buy it and get it shipped all the way down to them only to receive something like this. This happens all the time. So like if you have somebody that lives in Tennessee, like we have our insurance auto auctions uh, the Chattanooga location is literally two minutes away. So like if you have a car there uh, that you found that you want, you can easily hit us up and one of us will go down there and take a look at it for you. And you know, maybe charge you 50 bucks, which is a small price to pay than get something like this. If he would have sent somebody down there, he would know that it needs a subframe, it needs a frame rail, it needs an upper apron, it needs a shock tower, it needs a whole entire front clip. Uh, I mean, yeah, he saved on the fact that he doesn't have to replace the radiators and stuff like that. But on an Accord, all this stuff is super cheap. It's not like it's a BMW or something. So the car does run uh, and drive. So that's a plus for him. But like I said, something like this, you know, the resale value goes down. The, the safety uh, of the car, I think, is compromised. Of course, we are going to do everything in our power to rebuild this thing to factory specs. He does want to keep the car. So uh, it's not like he's trying to like pull it out or possibly stick it back on the auction like some people do. We don't ever do that. We've never done that. Uh, we know people that do that. There's people locally that do that all the time. We don't do that personally. We think that's wrong. It's morally uh, just horrible. So we would never do that. It, when we buy something like this, we do everything we can to fix it and get out of the situation, even if we end up having to use the car for parts. But this car being a sport, I don't think that it's worth parting out. Like I said, all we have to do is just replace this whole corner. Uh, it's going to be content for you guys. I'm gonna be helping my brother out. It's not even about money. I probably really won't even charge him for this, honestly. What do you think, Nate? Nah, we're gonna charge him. We're gonna charge him at the yin yang. No, I'm kidding. We're gonna give him a really good deal. I think maybe we'll trade on some work or some labor or something. Definitely gotta help the guy out. He's got a baby on the way. He just got married, just bought a house and he wanted a nice little family car, kind of got screwed on it. I can't say he got scammed because this is what you agree to when you hit that bid button. So can't be mad. The only thing you can do is find somebody who can do the job. And he's got someone right here. So uh, just kind of wanted to show you guys this before we jump into the actual frame job that we are doing today. I just want you guys to know that there's nothing really wrong with buying salvage cars. It's just that you want to go and look at it in person, especially if you're buying from a dealer who has rebuilt it, like the, the i8. I don't know if you guys seen Motorhead's video on why you should not buy a car sight unseen. Go check that out. You'll see all the issues. Nate, pan over to the i8 real quick. Right there, that car right there, absolutely horrible repair, repaired twice. And so it's not just cars off the auction. And uh, all that being said, let's jump right into the framework that we have today.
today I have a kind of small frame job for you guys. It's a Nissan Altima, as you can see. A little bit of beefage right there. So basically what happened with this car is it got wrecked, obviously, and everything got pushed over to that side. If you walk over here, you will see that we have a, a big gap. We call these sausage gaps because they're thick like sausages. So what we need to do is we need to simply you know pull it over that way and then replace the rebar and the rebar bracket the good thing about this uh, damage is that it was kind of to the side it wasn't like a direct hit to the rail so it did not damage the rail it didn't kink it going back it just crumpled that and it sent both of the rails to that side a little bit so it's not a big deal what i'm going to do right now is i am going to throw it up onto the clamps that way we can clamp it down real good. The reason why I want to put it on the clamps instead of blocks and chains is because we are pulling to the side. And when you're pulling both rails to the side, you want to have it the, the entire car uh, very stable on the pinch welds. Be, because if you use chains, you risk the chains tearing out the chain points underneath the car. So we're going to throw it up on the clamps real quick and get this thing pulled out and get it out of here. Because that's all we're doing on it. So let's get to work. So uh, what I have done, kind of, uh, kind of going to address uh, a hate comment, one hate comment out of our entire channel, it, our entire channel's existence. Talking about we didn't set the car up straight, we didn't anchor it down straight and stuff. Whatever, we don't care. We know we did. Look, 12 inches on this side, and then look at that, 12 inches on that side set up straight of course we'll measure it we'll make sure we're going to do like three or four scenes measuring the square and the height and everything just to show you guys i mean i guess i shouldn't even be addressing one single comment but i did not show well i did show it but nate cut it out we're never going to cut out where we measure before and after so you guys can see that the cars that roll off this frame machine are always squared well not always but from now on it's a new year it's monday of the new year from now on the cars will always be square always height will be the same and i made a rule where i'm not putting the car on the rack without all the parts and then after i already drove this thing on here and started on it dad tells me there's no headlight so we just kind of deal with it we love our dad he has his own methods he does it the way he does but i'm not gonna put another car up here if it's even missing a headlight or a bumper which this car is but i did say we were only doing the framework he did tell me he wants us to replace the core support as well which is part of it uh, so once we get this thing pulled out lined up we will take that off and replace the core support as well but we are ready to pull so we are going to jump right into it okay so to start the pull here's what i'm going to do i'm going to inspect the situation and if you look right here if you're looking from the front you can see that this uh rebar right here the bracket has uh it's hid, it, it, it's kind of moved itself that way. So instead of it being right here, it's over there. So it moved both rails, but it moved this rail just a little bit more than that one. If you look right here, you'll see that this bracket needs to be straight so that these bolts right here are in line of the center point of the bracket. If you look on this side, you can see that the bracket has deviated from its spot. So what I'm going to do, instead of grabbing it on the rebar like I did on the Accord, I'm going to grab it by this actual frame rail. So as this rail is pulled, hopefully it will pull more of this rail than that rail. That rail is still going to come with it, but hopefully it'll pull more of this. And I'm going to do a very simple pull with my favorite clamp, of course. Here she be. She's kind of worn out, honestly, but I think she'll still work. So it's almost at 19 and 19 and a quarter here it's 
almost 19, it's basically 19 and a quarter as well. So what I want to do now that I've got this pulled a bit, I'm probably going to tap it with the hammer right here a little bit just to encourage it to go over. We are going to do, Nate, grab me that thing right there. We have not, we have not changed the measurement on this squaring tram, tram gauge. So we are going to simply place it here. Wow. You see how much has gone over? Mm -hmm. That's absolutely insane. Was well, it gone too much? No. It's that, it's just simply because it, has gone where it needs to go so now we and the reason why i try to measure it to the headlight points is because it, like i said before if you can square off the headlight points you'll never have a problem installing your headlights <laughs> dang son all right now watch this i'm gonna let it off it's a smaller frame job than i thought it was gonna be Oh, that felt good. All right, now let's check it again. It went almost too easy, guys. Something fishy. Something fishy going on. It's not supposed to be that easy. That's a Nissan Altima, bro. They're made out of cotton. Huh? That's a Nissan. They're made out of cotton. Is that what they're made out of? Definitely looks like I pulled it too much. Think so? I don't know. I can't I can't seem to Oh, never mind. Hold on. We need to pull off the core support and the rebar. That's what we need to do. That's good. We are actually exactly where we need to be. So we are going to pull that off and see what happens. So uh as per usual, dad is on his way to get a new rebar. He brought us a damaged rebar and we declined it respectfully. So he's on his way to get another one. So when we apply our brand new core support, we see that the holes line up here, they line up here, and they also line up here for the most part. The only thing I do see is nothing there. Yeah, there's really no issues here besides maybe having to straighten out that top part right there a little bit. Mm -hmm. So this right here is gonna have to be straightened out a bit. And I mean, that's pretty much it. So you wanna make sure that you use a microfiber terry cloth when you are wiping your frame rack. You don't wanna put any scratches in it. Use something that's too rough, you might risk scratching it and then, you know, not gonna look good and stuff, so. Okay. Simple test. Simple test close. Yeah, buddy. It's almost there. You so. Pop the fender on too? Huh? Pop this side on? Yeah, we're about to. What I wanna do right now is go ahead and measure the square. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We are going to measure the square and we're going to measure we're going to measure the square to these right here. So I'm going to do a measurement like this and then like this and this 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 and this. Alright, so we are dead center on that bolt. And now we come over here. And we're a little bit over too far to the left. I do not know why. But that is my job to figure it out. Get that right, Nate Lee. So here's what we are going to do. To figure this out, figure out what is going on. Obviously it can't be too easy, you know? So uh, I'm going to put that fender on and then we're going to line up the gaps on the hood with the fenders and make sure that the door gaps are good 
And once we do that, once we're lined up with the door gaps and everything, then uh, then we can we'll, we will see what's off, what needs to go where. I honestly do think that I need to pull this forward a lot. Not a lot, but just like a good bit. Uh, that's why it's showing that that side's more because this is in. So if I pull this out, in theory, it should be right. But before I do that, before I start yanking on random things, I'm going to get this hood lined up. And then once we line the hood up, it will tell us where the center point needs to be. So, you know, kind of got to work with the tram gauge and with the parts because sometimes you just don't know which way you need to pull. And, you know, sometimes it is a height difference. If there's a height difference and you don't make sure that your height is the same on both frame rails and you start pulling and lining this up, you can get the square right on the car. You can get all the parts on the car and make it look right, but it's not going to be right. So definitely have to pay attention and definitely have to be real careful with uh, over pulling it or maybe even pulling the wrong way. So let's get these parts lined up and we'll go from there. What's happening? What's up, bro? What's going on? Just working. YouTube. YouTube, you know what I'm saying? YouTube. YouTube. Say hello to YouTube right there. What's happening? I got something for you, man. What you got? It was my brother. My brother, uh, Silver. You still got a few, baby. I'm going to go to the window. I don't know what I did. All right, so one of our longtime customers and pretty good friend of mine uh, brought us this car. As you can see, the hood popped up on his brother while he was driving. I think his brother got burned out with it and uh, just didn't want any more, so he sold it to him. It's got a few issues that we're going to take care of for him. I think we'll fix that as well for him uh, and probably install some brand new latches on there because I think it's the latches that made the hood pop up. And then another thing, <laughs> when he was coming over here, that happened i don't even know what's going on there i looked under there it doesn't look like anything's broken but you can't really see because it's so low so we'll have to take that wheel off and check out what's going on under there but for now we're going to go grab some lunch with the boys and uh jump right back on the altima by then dad should be back to those parts that we need again. yeah yeah he'll be back we just got back from lunch and dad brought me a new rebar well i can't say new this is also a used rebar but it's not damaged like the other one that he had brought me so I put the rebar on and right now what I want to do, I want to measure the, the height. So I'm going to put my measuring tape. And, and another one thing I want to say is I always use a measuring tape because I set the car up by a measuring tape to the frame rack. And then I use a measuring tape in the front because the floor is not level necessarily. Neither is the, the, the frame. I know the frame should always be level, but it's just not. So a measuring tape is going to be a lot more accurate than trying it with a level. Right there, you see 18 and three quarters right there at the bottom. And then on this side is the same thing, 18 and three quarters. And then we also need to measure the square. So we're going to hop up here and measure the square. We've got a center of the bolt there. It's about as close to center of the bolt as you're going to get. And then we're going to measure this side. And it's about the center of the bolt as it's going to get. So that tells me that we're pretty good on that. What I'm going to do next. Oh, another thing I want to show you guys is this right here. Watch this. So if you look inside here, you will see this side. They're not necessarily adjustable, but you can see where the nuts were from the original one. These are back in their spots. And then on that side, it's highly adjustable. But if you look closely, you will see that the nuts are back in the original spots. So we know that our rebar is in its proper position. Uh, also, another thing I want to mention is right now, as it sits, our subframe is loose. I will show you now. Tightened. That means we did not put the frame rails under tension and then tighten them down. So that means if somebody wanted to go to replace the subframe, they would easily be able to do so because it's not under any tension. So I'll have to tighten up the back ones as well here in a second. But I want to take off this rebar and try the core support and see how that fits. Because I haven't even tried it. I haven't really tried it since I squared it off. So let's see how that fits. Let's see if we can make one whole scene without a cut. 
Already, already a cut. Boom, cut. Why? that bolt up and what do you know it fits Nate yes sir I have to say you're a beast with it what was that like five minutes that was like two minutes Yuri man. went to the bathroom and I decided to surprise him. I said I'm gonna go use the bathroom and I come back and this guy it sucks that nobody had nobody recorded it right yeah I, I mean kind of whack it is what it is though you guys know Nate's a beast absolute boss with it uh maybe you need to toss that hood latch on and see how that thing yeah that's fits. what i was trying to do I'm trying to get it it's right here oh the hood latch fits. yeah make sure you run that cable the we'll, proper we'll way go to it, yes. as you can see it is lined up with the hood latch there it goes all right let's show them the it gaps really good they look really good the hood right here is like a little bit lower than the fender but i can't do anything about that because it's been bonded before. Right, right. So how's it going? How's it looking on this side? This side, the fender, the I think the fender needs to be adjusted a bit. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. So what else do we have left on this framework? The only thing that I'm thinking that we need to do here is uh, once we get the headlights and the front bumper, then we can tweak this and stuff. But we know that the square is good. We know that the height on the rails is good. The front end is buttoned up. The hood closes. So all this right here, this is all going to be done once we do actually have this headlight. Because without this headlight, I don't know if it's the fender that needs to come down or the hood that needs to come up. Yeah, and so we see a weight on the headlights. And yeah, dad, dad likes to, dad likes to wait on stuff. I know a lot of you guys are saying, "Oh, stop complaining and helping more of the parts," bro. It ain't, it ain't that simple. <laughs> it ain't that simple with the old man. But uh, yeah, it's looking really good. All right, so we got the bumper on. He actually needs a new bracket here which doesn't have, needs a new bracket here. Also does not have that. So this right here is not going to stay down, but everything fits really good. The headlight fits real nice. It fits into the bumper real good. This fits up decent right here. The only issue that we are having is that this bumper bracket right here is bent up. I don't know if they want to replace it or not, but that's what we have. I'm not going to be fiddling with it. I'm going to let dad take care of it. Either he's going to replace it or he's going to straighten it out. We know that the car squared up. We know that the gaps are all good. It's just a matter of him buttoning it up. So this one's done. Uh, he doesn't have the headlight for this side. He doesn't have the bumper bracket for this side or the bumper bracket for this. So there's just really nothing I can do as far as actually lining everything up. And he just asked us, he said, why do you want to button it up on the frame? <laughs> but I usually like to get the headlights on, all the brackets and all the gaps perfect before the car is taken off the clamps. But since we know that the square is good, we know that the height on the rails is good, I have no problem taking this car down as it sits. All this other stuff that needs to be lined up, that can all be done on the ground. It can be done after the paint's uh, finished, everything. Uh, I'm gonna tell him, I'm going to recommend him replace this bracket and the two brackets that hold this. I don't know if he's going to. I hope he does. It's going to make the front end look a lot cleaner, a lot better. Uh, if he doesn't, he's just gonna have to fiddle around with it for a long time before he can make it look right. That's going to be it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed the content, hit that like button. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. It keeps us motivated, keeps us wanting to bring you guys more content. And also check us out on Instagram at 23rd underscore garage. And I'm gonna see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.